Okay, how's it guys? Um, this is my episode on LC filters. Um, the first section we're going to cover just LC filter. Then we're going to cover um, LC filter regulators. And then finally my setup um, and testing of my setup with the LC filter regulator. Okay, so your basic LC filter, basically what happens is your power comes in, your ground or your common is going to bypass, and then your positive is going to go through this coil. It goes through the coil, comes out the other side, and goes through to a capacitor. The capacitor I've chosen is a 470 microfarad, 25 volt electrostatic capacitor. The reason I went with 25 volt is just as a precaution. I know I was playing with 16 volt ones, and I put, well, no, sorry, 12 volt ones, and I put 12.6 in and it exploded. So I've just gotten a bit higher. It doesn't make that much of a difference in size either. I've thrown LEDs in all my systems so that I know that I have power on it because, well, it's good to know that. And I like to have an indicator in line. I'll be posting the circuit diagram on this so you guys can see exactly how to build it. Um, I also do a layout on some strip board. It's a very straightforward build. Um, I added a bit of hot glue so nothing shorts. But, um, okay, so my LC filter um, with my setup. I got it backwards, okay. Okay, with my LC filter build, what's going to happen is over here, you're going to have your, um, okay, yeah, your negative in, your positive in. Positive in is going to go to here, then it's going to go through the coil, and it's going to come out on this side. Oop, this side over here. From here, you're going to go to your capacitor's positive lead. Also, with the resistor, you're going to jump to the middle, where you're going to have had to break, uh, break the leads over there over there. Use the drill bit to do that. Okay, then the ground is going to just run straight through. Although to the end, you're going to bridge it over here to the center pin so that your positive comes from that positive, negative. And that's basically the LC filter. It's very straightforward. Easy build. Uh, okay, guys. Um, this over here is my custom setup. I've shown you guys how to make the LC filter um, with the LED indicator. This is still got to get an LED put into it, but this is specific to my setup. I've got a um, LM7809 in here, so it's going to regulate me to 9 volts. The reason I'm going to 9 volts is that my system takes 12, but it'll run on 5. So I want to run it on a higher voltage, but I don't want to run it over 12 with my 3S LiPo. So this is going to drop me to 9 volts, and when my voltage of my LiPo drops to about... I think it's 9.6, it's then going to drop out, it's going to bypass, and when it bypasses, it's then going to go to 9.6 volts, and it's going to do no damage to my system. So what I've done is I've got the bottom here, I've got a servo extension plug, which goes through this uh, coil, there's my LC filter, then it feeds into the input, which has a capacitor, which you can barely see, on the side there, to filter my input, goes through my chip, and out to the slightly larger capacitor. Um, and then I've got that plug for my um, for my actual FPV system, and that's gonna plug straight in and keep it nice and compact. It's my little FPV transmitter, 400 milliwatt, 5.8. Um, I'm gonna add a bit of cable sleeving to it now, just to make it look cool. Um, then I'm gonna figure out what heat sink I've got laying around, and I'm gonna heat shrink it up, and it should be done. But I'm gonna throw in an LED just so that I know that it's on. Now this little guy. I just finished making it. It's got a heat sink that I found, well, I bought for a graphics card modification I did a few years ago. Um, got a blue LED in it. Got input, output, and, uh, uh, sorry, capacitors on input and output. An LC filter on the input, or a coil on the input. Um, and it's got a 9 volt regulator. It's a LM7809. Uh, it's not a low dropout, it's just it's what they had. Uh, and then I've got two servo connectors here. Bottom one's going to be for power. Top one's going to be for GoPro. And then it's going to go straight from here, straight into my receiver, all neatly with one cable with a bit of snazzy sleeving. And then in theory, I can just stack these on top of each other, um, and it's a ready-to-go compact system. Okay, um, then I'm going to remake my GoPro cable. I'm not going to bother doing a video about that. You guys know how that works. Um, but anyway, that's just an overview of it. Thanks for watching. Um, please rate and subscribe.